Hi guys, so we have an unboxing today, the first one since the move, and this one is a little bit special. We're going to be taking a look at one of my favorite dolls from my childhood. That would be the Storytime Princess Little Mermaid doll from MGA. Forgive me, my desk is over there now, so I have to kind of awkwardly hold them. But wait, there's more. I also have the Little Mermaid, uh, Mermaid doll. So... This one has legs, this one has a fishtail, and apparently she actually swims in water, so maybe we'll test that out, see if that mechanic still works. So, the story behind these is pretty interesting, and there's not a ton of information on their conception, but they are from MGA, who by the time these came around, I want to say 2006? But around that time, MGA was obviously known more for brats and marketing themselves as the antithesis to the uber girly Barbie Disney princess kind of doll. So it's interesting that they would try and move into the fairy tale market, but I remember that Isaac Larian, Mr. MGA himself, once talked about how he turned down an offer for the Disney princess license because it just wouldn't be profitable for the company. So I do wonder if these came before or after that. The actual name of the brand was Storytime Collection, and these were a subcategory of princess dolls. So formally, these are Storytime Collection princess dolls, but they're usually just referred to as Storytime Princesses. There was also the Storytime Classics Collection, which were basically just smaller, more babyish dolls. And this doll is one of the deluxe versions. So for every princess, there was a deluxe and a budget version. They would all include a doll and a storybook, but the deluxe version had full dresses, the little tiara, the book was much larger, and I believe in general just came with more jewelry and accessories. And then, of course, you had your gimmick dolls and your play sets and everything. The dolls themselves are not incredibly hard to find, though the deluxe versions can get a little expensive. Some, though, like the Swan Princess doll, and there's another mermaid doll separate from the Little Mermaid that is considered somewhat rare. But I had this exact doll as a child, and I absolutely loved her. Even as a kid, I kind of had that collector's mindset, so I like to display my dolls. And of course, I had this big display of all the mermaid dolls that I cherished, you know, Masquerade Madness Chelsea from my scene, the Mermaid Fantasy Barbies, a lot of Ariel dolls. But she, Little Mermaid here, was always front and center. I just adored her. I thought she was the most beautiful thing ever. I also thought it would be extra fun considering all the buzz surrounding the new live action Little Mermaid movie, which for the record, I am incredibly excited for. So I'm really looking forward to getting her out and taking a closer look at her, so. Let's go ahead and get into it. So, here she is. I did get her from eBay, and her box has definitely seen better days, but that's okay. She won't be in there for much longer. As you can see, it includes the doll, the storybook, the little tiara, the Storytime Collection logo, which is super cute. And on the back here, we have the same artwork featured on the storybook. It says... Bring your favorite fairy tales to life with the Storytime Collection Princess. Each doll comes with her own tiara, dazzling dress, and shoes, plus a beautifully illustrated storybook that features an original retelling of the classic fairy tale. She also comes with a life-size tiara for you to wear. And then we have some images of the prototypes of the dolls. There's Beauty and the Beast, Princess and the Pea, Rapunzel, who is absolutely gorgeous, Sleeping Beauty, Snow White, and of course, our girl, the Little Mermaid. I will say, I don't see Cinderella or the Swan Princess, who I know were included at some point. So maybe they're from a later release. Maybe that's why they're a little rarer than the others. I'm not sure. Also, very disappointing range of skin tones, especially from the company behind Bratz. I believe Beauty and the Beast, Princess and the Pea, and The Little Mermaid are the only ones who don't have the very fair skin tone. The Little Mermaid has kind of a medium tan, and I believe these two are slightly darker than their prototypes. It's unfortunate that we didn't get a darker skinned princess in the lineup, 
I guess that's a testament to just how far diversity in the fashion doll world has come since 2006, but obviously we still have some ways to go. But let's go ahead and get her out, which shouldn't be too hard because this box is pretty much falling apart in my hands. Isn't it great unboxing old dolls because everything holding them in is essentially just already degraded? But here she is, so stunning, so beautiful. I love everything about her. Her face in particular is so charming. The whole line, I think the faces are the perfect midpoint between looking very stylized and very animated but also looking very, very glamorous. She does have some pretty shimmery, frosty eyeshadow and also some pink lipstick. She of course has this beautiful bright red hair, some very simple stud earrings, and of course her tiara. Every doll had their own unique tiara, and the Little Mermaids is a very interesting design. It comes down over the right side of her head here, and her hair, it, does, it doesn't feel great. I think this was around the time that MGA only had access to kind of lower quality hair for their dolls. But I say this pretty much every time I do one of these unboxings. This has been sitting in a box for many, many years and likely it just needs a good wash. But some parts of it are already getting pretty naughty, pretty matted. So she needs some work. One interesting thing is that Although her nails are not painted, she does have molded on fingernails. And I feel like that's a bit of a running theme with MGA dolls outside of Bratz. They do tend to have very, very detailed hand sculpts. The outfit she comes in is not exceedingly complicated, but it is very, very pretty. She has this really cute strappy top that's just fastened with some Velcro in the back. It's pretty well made, hemmed all along the edges, and it has this kind of netting material decorating the neckline, and of course, her little necklace here. She has a matching skirt. It's the same kind of emerald green filigree pattern all around, and then this glittery netted over skirt, which is not nearly as full as the prototype image, but it has, it has some decent poof to it. It is, of course, a mermaid style gown. It has some light green panels here on the bottom to evoke the idea of a mermaid tail. Mine unfortunately has some pretty big snags in it just from the packaging. And her shoes are just these cute light green heels. A bit of a, a seaweed pattern on them I think. Some seahorses too. And just to give you a good look at her body, it is the very standard kind of Barbie-ish doll type body slim hourglass figure, the standard five points of articulation at the head, at the arms, the legs, and as usual with dolls around this time, super rubbery, slightly pliable, complete with click knees. I do really like the proportions of these dolls. I think if they were slightly more common, they probably would have attracted a really cool customization community. Just for comparison's sake, she is very close in size to a Mycene doll, only I think her body might be just slightly thicker and her head is just slightly larger. Here is the tiara she comes with. Very much, you know, a plastic tiara. Not particularly made for me as a fully grown adult human with pretty short hair and all, but it's sweet. It's cute. And of course, here is her little storybook. I think it would be a little awkward for me to just read this whole thing out loud, but I will flip through it, so feel free to pause if you want to read MGA's version of The Little Mermaid.
So, yeah, the usual pretty sanitized version of The Little Mermaid. You know, I was pretty young when I discovered the true story of The Little Mermaid. My grandma bought me this movie. I think it was just titled The Little Mermaid, and it was clearly not the Disney version, which I think she knew that. But unbeknownst to her, it was an English dub of the 1975 anime film Hans Christian Andersen's The Little Mermaid, which was pretty faithful to the original story, complete with the Little Mermaid dying and dissolving into sea foam at the end. So, yeah, not so fun the very first time I watched it, but even though I was like, uh, what, eight or nine, I really grew to love it, and I watched that movie all the time. Anyways, let's take a look at the other Little Mermaid doll now. So this one, it comes with, of course, the doll, a little seahorse friend for her. It says it apparently floats in water, and an all-new storybook as well. This one is titled The Little Mermaid's Dolphin Adventure, and it's waterproof. So I guess if you wanted to take it into the pool or the bath with you, you could do that. So. I didn't have this doll as a kid. I actually didn't know about her until very recently. But once I saw her, I knew I had to have her because according to the box, she swims in water. She moves like a real mermaid. And I don't know, I'm so curious. I remember the mermaid fantasy Barbies with the rubbery tails that moved if you like squeeze their hips. But this one, apparently she does it on her own. Here on the back of the box, we have this beautiful photograph of her, and this girl over here just absolutely living her mermaid fantasy. I'm so jealous. And it says, Bring your fairy tales to life with MGA Storytime Collection, The Little Mermaid. And over here, she really swims. The swimming little mermaid has a beautiful glittery tail and delicate body art. She also comes with an all-new waterproof illustrated storybook full of adventure. And a picture of also the Sea Chariot playset, which I absolutely want, but I don't know if it was ever released. I've never actually seen it for sale or anything like that, so let me know if you've ever owned this. And below that, you'll notice it says that batteries are required, so I guess that kind of solves the mystery of how she swims on her own. And thank God the batteries were not included because God only knows what would happen to her if she was sitting in that box with batteries inside her for 16 years. So yeah, let's get her out and take a closer look. So here she is, absolutely gorgeous. She is very similar to the other Little Mermaid, obviously, though her eyes are quite a bit larger. Her makeup is a bit heavier. And she has this little face paint design too. And her hair is also a much darker red. I would almost call it brown. Her hairstyle is also a little bit more complex. It has all these braids in it. I am probably going to need to replace all these rubber bands. I'm sure they are on their last leg. So we will see how that goes. Here are the two together to compare and contrast. Her crown is slightly different. It has a more elaborate design. When I was looking at it, I noticed, I don't know if it shows well on camera, but that is very much a cherry blossom and a folding fan, right? So that's interesting. I'm wondering if there was a planned princess who was East Asian, perhaps an MGA Mulan doll that was never made and maybe they just reused her tiara design. But it also has the starfish and the waves on this side, so I don't know. She's basically wearing a simplified version of the first Little Mermaid's top, the strappy sort of bikinis top style. Uh, she also has some interesting painted designs on her arms. So obviously the statement for this doll is the tail. It is this beautiful glittery deep green color that kind of ombres into this deep blue. And it has these molded on scales all the way down. Her fishtail design is pretty interesting. It's a little more maybe severe than I would have expected. But the tail overall, it is quite rubbery. And it feels exactly how I remember the Mermaid Fantasy dolls feeling. 
if you've never felt them, that probably means nothing to you, but the girls who know will know. But basically, on the inside, it feels quite hard. Like, there's definitely some kind of mechanism in there, and it has this just this soft, rubbery coating. Side note, I've seen a few of these for sale out of box, and almost everyone I've seen, the tail is, like, just absolutely destroyed, just peeling and coming apart and missing, like, huge chunks of it. So I do not think that these were built to last, so be aware of that if you do want to get one for yourself. Unless all these people were just eating their dolls, which is possible, I guess. Here's her seahorse friend. It is very much a plastic seahorse, just a, an interesting little guy. And here's her story. Just like before, I'm just going to flip through it, so feel free to pause if you want to read all about The Little Mermaid's Dolphin Adventure. Okay, so I'm very curious about this swimming mechanic. So I want to know if it's still going to work after all these years. So I'm going to go grab some batteries. I'm going to go fill up the bathtub and I'll meet you guys there. So apologies for the lighting and the sound. Obviously I can't drag my whole setup here into the bathroom, but here I am at the bathtub with the mermaid. Time for the moment of truth. Let's see if she swims. Okay, so it's safe to say that that's not work anymore. That's kind of disappointing. Sorry, girl. She doesn't swim on her own, but if you shake her, you can at least see what kind of movement her tail was supposed to have. But I guess we got her wet for nothing. Oh well. So, there we go. A look at MGA's Storytime Princess Little Mermaid Dolls. If you were like me and you had one of these as a kid and you loved her as much as I did, I hope this was a good trip down memory lane for you. If these are new to you, I'm so happy I got to share them with you. Let me know your thoughts down below. Let me know if you've ever had one or if you want any of the princess dolls. Let me know what your favorite version of The Little Mermaid is. As always, be sure to like and subscribe for any future fashion doll content. Thank you.